Good morning, good morning, good morning, City Cathedral. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of our mothers and all of the sisters. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day from our City Cathedral Praise Team Band and Audiovisual Ministry. We wish you all a happy Mother's Day today. So come on in and enjoy this service that we prepared for you. It's going to be a great day here at City Cathedral. Welcome to all of our members at Woodlands, Houston, Sugarland. We thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And just in case you don't know where you are, you are at City Cathedral. Yes, that's right. We happen to be one church in multiple locations, and you are invited to our e-church. That's right. We're streaming to you right now in your home home, in your car, at your office, wherever you are today, as you're probably preparing those last minute gifts for mom or for your daughter-in-law or whomever it is, we want to welcome you into the service of the Lord today. Now, as you're preparing to come on in and you're sharing this page and you're liking this page and you're retweeting it and letting everybody know that you're in church and to come to church with you, I have some announcements that I'd like to share with you. Compliments of the City Cathedral Praise Press. Our Praise Press correspondent is here this morning. Sister Simone, tell us what's happening this week. Help overcome this. Yeah. Remember, anyone at the age of 16 and older are eligible, no appointment necessary, and free of charge. Wow. Do you want to further your Christian education? Enroll today in the Kenania Theological College. That's right. Scholarships are available, so call our local business office or you can sign up on our local website. It's been so many things happening. So just as a quick recap, I want to remind all of our brothers, join us next Saturday at Herman Park for a great time of fellowship with the Kenosis Men's uh, Fraternity. And then I want you to join us by taking your best shot. You know, getting vaccinated is so important. It improves your general health and it also makes you safer to move about. And when we get ready to return back to service, I want you to make sure that you signed up and you registered and let us know your feelings. Have you been vaccinated or not? All of those things are going to be important to help us determine the best way for us to reconnect very, very soon. And then Connelia Theological College, yes, enrolling right now. That's all that I have to share with you right now. We'll be back at the end of service to talk with you about more, but I know that you're ready to get started. Worship is about to start. The praise team is here. The band is here. It's time to lift up the name of Jesus. Now, they got a good one for you, so you might want to move some furniture around and begin to make you a dance floor because worship is about to start. Can I count down? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Everybody singing fire.
Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I need the Holy 
elect ones. Truly God is worthy to be praised, child of God. And, and listen, happy Mother's Day to all of you, to all of the females out there, and, um, and all of the mothers too as well. We just, we just thank the Lord for Jesus. To my biological mother, I love her so. And uh, my, my wife, First Lady, God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. All of the mothers-in-laws, all of you, Lottie Dottie, everybody, all of our members and mothers of Mary, we certainly want to say happy Mother's Day to you. Boy, what a, what a great day that the Lord has made, and we shall, will rejoice and be glad. You know, I, I get excited um, when that worship and praise team, I, that's one of my favorite songs. One of many that they sing, and um, fire fall down on me, my God. Now that's what fire does. Uh, it will purify. It will, it will make you better. It know how to change the very disposition of something. And it, fire can certainly make you move out of your will, too. You know, you touch a match, you ain't going to be still, calm, still, and stationary. So we thank the Lord for Jesus. We're delighted that you're here and not there. I, I, I do want to say once again to all of you, all of our guests and visitors, the City Cathedral family, and uh, God bless you. We hope that you are adhering to the announcements, all, all, all of the things that we are doing and trying to do as it relates to worship. I do believe that there's, there's a pivotal word, pivotal word that God is going to bless you with. As I say, and, and it's just a reminder, child of God, I, I'm, I'll be so happy, glad when we finally return in the physical to 
our worship in our Houston Auditorium and, of course, uh, our Woodlands campus. Uh, just can't wait. Just can't wait. So I just want you to continue to remain prayerful that the Spirit of the Lord will speak to me, that uh, he will be merciful over the atmosphere, not just Houston, but across the world in this new world order, you know, and it is. This situation has changed the, the entire culture and, uh, and how we behave and all of that. But once again, happy Mother's Day to you. I want you to go with me. In fact, go with me. Well, place that weaponry in your hand and give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have today. I'm going to be taught in the word of the Lord. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive. I'm ready to hear the incorruptible, irrefutable word of the living God. I know we'll never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. Come on, give it away in the life of the Christian symphony. Listen, I want you to go with me to First Chronicles chapter 4. It should be on the board. Verses 9 through 10. First Chronicles, not First Corinthians. First Chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 through 10. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain and sorrow. So Jabez cried out, not out of distress, but he prayed to the Lord, the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my borders, my territory. Let your hand be with me keep me from harm so that I will be free from this pain, this sorrow. And this conjunction that creates a completion. And God granted his request. And God granted his request. Who I'm still here in fire. Lord Jesus, have mercy, Lord. This is part five, I believe, Sister Tara. Uh, be smart and do your part. Come on, say it with me. Be smart and do your part. Right before we dive into this teachment and to this continuity of word, um, once again, happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, I want you to underscore real quickly. I'm not here to necessarily give you teachment specifically on, on mothers, but I just want to say why I'm saying to every female, to every female with a womb that you are a mother by way of maternal instincts. How do you know that, Bishop? Well, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, it talks about that Adam named his wife Eve after the evening of the sun because he knew that she was the mother of all living. Read the story, that she was the mother of all living, and this was before Eve became impregnated that Adam, by way of revelation and discernment, understood that his wife that he named Eve had maternal instincts long before giving birth to a child. And so every, every female is the legal entry to this earth realm or to this universe. So I can carefully and confidently say, happy Females Day, Happy Mother's Day to every woman Miss Universe because you are the legal entry to this earth realm. God bless you so very much. In fact, I'm going to give you a little word called Thelus. Say it with me, Thelus, T-H-E-L-U-S. It's having maternal instincts as a mother before you finally become a mother. And for those who have adopted surrogate mothers because um, your biological mother is not here, I say to you that God is the multi-breasted one, that he is the one that can mother you and father you. So you be encouraged, be lifted in your spirit. I'm believing that after this sermon preachment that you will be blessed and encouraged in terms of this message. All right. Be smart and do your part. The word smart is ben, or the Hebrewic tongue called ben, uh, B. I-Y-N, it deals with to not only be smart, but having the ability to do your part because of the endowment of God.
God's knowledge is to be well informed. It is to be intelligent, uh, not because of books, and that's good, but because God has downloaded some information in your spirit man. So the obligation of doing your part is really indicative of your having the ability to. God will never place a demand on your to do something without equipping you to pull it off. And then can the Lord ex expect us to do our part when we've not been empowered to pull it off? So be smart and do your part. The knowledge of what you should be doing obligates you to do it. All right? So be smart and do your part. In part one and two, we talked about doing your part in terms of trusting God, in terms of releasing your faith. In part three, and I got so many happy uh, reports on that, in terms of functional anger, that it's okay, according to scripture, to be angry but sin not because vengeance is mine. I'm talking to you, woman of God, my dear sister. I know that you've been pricked with pain and it's been so unfairly done. Be angry but sin not. Make sure that the Spirit of the Lord will help you to channel um, that anger, to help you to channel those emotions so that you won't sin in your thought and in your deeds. And then, of course, in part four, which is a piggyback, or part five, part five is a carryover of part four. Be smart and do your part in terms of facilitating the need to make decisions. We talked about it on last week, and I believe that there's another new revelation in terms of decision making. So there are three points. Number one, and if you were to look at your previous notes, you would see that decisions are inescapable. Decisions are inescapable. Number two, decisions must be interviewed. And number three, decisions are inconvenient. Decisions are an inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Decisions are inescapable. It doesn't matter how quick you are that you can walk and chew bubble gum at the The truth of the matter is that life evolves around making a decision. I said with me, life evolves around making a decision because where you are today is a direct indication of your decision that you made in your yesterday. Because your yesterday decision is nothing but a byproduct of your today's decision. So literally, you're making a decision twice, once in your yesterday and twice in your today. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to make sure um, that you understand that in order for us to embrace decision making with a first class attitude, we must come in agreement that decisions are being made every day of your life, child of God. Because life evolves around decision making without your consent. And that's why in the book of Joshua, go there real quickly, the book of Joshua real quickly, chapter 24, go there. That's Old Testament, not John, chapter 24. Um, Verse 15, look what it says. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day to whom you are served. Because your today will always place a demand on your making a decision. Your today will always place a demand of your making a decision. Joshua says, as for me in this house, I'm going to choose this day, not tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised to us. So I'm going to choose this day to make a good decision, an honest decision. I'm going to make sure that this day that I'm going to make a good decision because life evolves around making a decision. So you might as well recruit yourself in making one since decisions are inevitable. 
Does that make any sense to you? I know it does. Go with me to the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm chapter 90. It's a familiar read. The book of Psalms chapter 90, look at verse 12. Now, this is David, and many scholars believe that this was Moses that, that, that was talking about the need to make a decision. Look what he says. He says, teach us, teach me how to number my days. Teach me how to number my days. Now, Moses was not asking God. Rather, it was Moses or even David that we're not in debate. Many scholars are having debate who was the writer. It's not important. It's in the word. It's all God's word, right? When he says, teach us, teach me how to number my days, he was not asking God to teach him arithmetic. He was asking God to teach him how to prophesy and prognosticate or to determine and predict how his day should be like. He understood that if I don't make a decision in my today, then my tomorrow will not be determined in how I make a decision in my today. So I need you to teach me. And sometimes that has to be taught because circumstances has a way of determining the kind of day that you should have. Don't allow circumstances or even people to determine how your day should be. That's a result, that's a job of the Holy Spirit. You know, the worship and praise team was just thinking about that fire. That's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God can teach us how to number, how to prophesy how your day should be. And it, it, listen, and it's not based on feelings. I don't feel like getting up, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to shop for myself. I'm not going to go out to eat because I don't feel like it. Don't allow your moving forward to be determined by how you feel. And so much so, even how you dress. You don't dress because you feel like it. You dress how you want to feel. Does that make any sense? You know, if you're feeling down, dress up. If you want to feel like classy, dress classy. Don't wait until you feel like dressing before you finally dress because you probably won't dress. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, so David, David or Moses was asking God to teach him, co-act, to show him, give him the ability how to really number my days. Because if you don't, if you opt not to prophesy or predict your day, then circumstances will sign themselves up to determine how your day should be. And that's not right. No, ain't no such thing that, you know, a bad day all day. No, the devil is a lie. Just because it's raining, I'm going to have a good day because rain is good. Rain calls stuff to grow, the grass to grow. The more the grass to grow, the cows eat. Hamburger, you know, water burger, I'm just saying. Does it make any sense to you? Yes. So those days have to be taught. The Lord will teach you if you were to ask him. You have to ask him to teach you how to predict and prophesy and prognosticate your day to determine how your day should be. Don't allow people to determine your day. I'm going to have a happy day because I'm happy. I choose to be happy. Not on certain people's, you know, consent, you know, not based on what's happening, but how I respond to what's happened, based on my decision, how I respond to what's happening. So ask the Lord to teach you how to number how to number your day. It's really called reowning your power in your now. I was talking to a sister just the other day. You got to do, look, look, look. You have to tell yourself self is in session. Life is in session. Put a red light out there. And sometimes you have to make an announcement because people are so preoccupied disturbing your day. And they become very unconfident. There's a major discomfort with people sometimes of your announcing that you are going to enjoy your day. People sometimes call me and I tell them, I'm out to dinner. I'm having dinner. I'll call you later. Oh, really? I just want to drop one thing. No, no, no. I'm eating because what you may tell me may disturb my sweet tooth. Make a decision that you're going to manage your life in making yourself happy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Say it with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15, choose ye this day. 
Don't let the circumstance, don't let your day choose your day. You choose the kind of day that you're going to make. Choose the kind of day that you are going to behave in. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. In the book of Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, prophesy. Say it for me. Prophesy. Prophesy and predict how your day should be. Especially since we know that life evolves around decision making. Number two, we must interview our decisions. Decisions or interview. Interview the dichotomy of the word decision, decision, decision. I am a teacher of God's holy writ. Man should live by every word, every part of that puzzle. Decision, the word D means off. Decision means to cut, to cut off the negative influences that prevents us from making a wise decision. And there are many dynamics that suggest to us, Minister Andre, um, that suggest to us that there are negative influences that are lurking to keep us from making a positive or a wise decision. And that's why it's so important that we bake wisdom into our inevitable decision making. You have to commingle wisdom in making a wise decision. I know that's a double redundant, but I really want to emphasize that to you. You have to interview. There are ways that you can cut off these dynamics and voices that becomes influential to keep you from making a wise decision. One of it is, is that you never want to make decisions based on assumption because you would always assume the worst. You have to know. You have to do your due diligence. You have to do your homework. You have to do some study. You know, some of you are, are you know, you're thinking about marrying, and that's a good thing, but make sure that you interview. I'll be talking about marriage in the next series piece or next week and week after next and all of that, but listen, do your homework first. Do some investigation. Put on your FBI hat. Search it out. Don't allow desperation to talk you out of your need to do much needed research on that person on that person's gender, <laughs> on that person's mindset, all right? I'm just talking now. This is important. It's important that, that you do some interviewing. Said with me, I have to do some research. His ain't nothing wrong with history. Google will find out. Facebook, just look on Facebook, you'll see. Look on Facebook, look on social media. Social media will tell you who they are. They got people right now, they, got, they, they have companies that they won't hire folk unless they look on social media. That's why you got to be careful what you put out there. You're putting everything out there. Mooning and going on. I'm just saying, you don't be doing that. I'm telling you, I was, I was in the neighborhood. I was in my neighborhood. I remember living in a pretty nice place, in a pretty nice neighborhood, and I was doing some yard work. And all of a sudden, it was nine ladies. They were dressed like in 1940s. Just the other day, I didn't know, I thought maybe they were in a play, but they were walking down the neighborhood dressed up, some with heels and stockings, and they were like doing uh, twerking. I said, the devil is alive. I said, Jesus, in Jesus' name, move, move around. So you got to do something. <laughs> Lord help, I'm telling you. You have to do your homework. You have, to, you have to interview. You have to make sure. All right. Okay. So if you need some wisdom, the Lord will help you to walk in wisdom. Since we know that decisions are inevitable, we must allow decisions to be baked in with, with wisdom, with wisdom, with wisdom. And part of the wisdom is don't allow people to pressure you to make uh, an immature decision. They know you ain't ready for it. Talking about go on, get the car, and then you struggling with the doom buggy. Come on and talk to me. Wrong counsel. Okay, iron sharpens iron, but you got to be very careful that you, like, co-mingle yourself with wise people that are making wise choices. I'm not saying that, you know, that you won't blunder, you won't, you know, make a mistake. You will in your quest of making a wise decision. That will happen, but you want to make sure that you surround yourself by wise people. Well, how do you know that they're wise? Interview them. Make sure that they're living by the word of God because in the fear of God is the beginning 
of wisdom. Don't be lured by instant gratification. You want it now, and so you're going to make an unwise decision because, you know, you've not worked on your patience because your parents didn't correct you when you were a child, gave you everything when you wanted, knowing that you were not prepared for it. So make sure that you surround yourself by mature folk and wise individuals. Make sure that what you are deciding to do is not driven by the wrong motives, by poor motives. And let me give you the scripture. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, it talks about be honest, have an honest assessment about your motive, why you want it, and why you want it so quickly. You know, we live in a generation where there's a sense of urgency, this microcosm, this microwave mindset. So it's important um, that you make a wise decision in not being seduced in making a quick decision because you want to be gratified. I know that makes sense because that's working with me. And then past experience ought to inform our need or our decision making. Wisdom will give you past experience or even the lesson learned, rather. You know, the biggest institution in this world is called wisdom, past experience. Partner with people of wisdom. Let me give you several scriptures. The book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 14, and chapter 8, verse 1. But then lastly, decisions are an inconvenient. Sometimes they are. In 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named Jabez uh, pain, saying that I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God in context, the God of Israel, oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory or borders. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from this sorrow or this pain. And the scripture says in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 through 10, and God granted him his request. Now the first nine chapters of 1 Chronicles deals with the etymology of the begats. What sons, what the sons came from, what fathers, and of the southern kingdom of Judah. But Jabez, watch this, look at the text, called upon the father of the God of Israel, the northern kingdom, of which he was not from. Jabez, according to the first nine chapters of First Chronicles, that dealt with the progeny of the progenitors, hallelujah, that he was from the southern kingdom or the tribe of Judah. But here it is. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, the northern kingdom of which he was not from, but knew enough about the God of Israel as the God of promise. Watch this. So Jabez's request of God's help was the promise that he understood God to be. Sometimes it's the inconveniences and the discomforts of life that causes us to decide to seek, watch this, a higher resolve to our problems and pain. Rather than surrendering to his unjust pain, Jabez made a decision to ask God for help. So in verse 10, he asked God to enlarge his borders so that he could see beyond what life had dealt him. I wish I had somebody here. Jabez discovered that I'm more than what I've been labeled as. Jabez was named son of pain or son of sorrow because his mother bored him in pain. A pain that was not his fault. In other words, don't allow the pain and the failures of others to cause you to be a victim to how you see and treat yourself. Let me say it once again, that Jabez discovered that I'm more than what I've been labeled as. 
Jabez's name means son of sorrow and pain, and that was his label because his mother birthed him in pain, a pain that he had nothing to do with. Don't allow, child of God, the pain, the problems and failures of others cause you to be a victim to how you see and treat yourself. Some people will place an unreasonable expectation on you when in fact it's really a failed expectation of themselves. And now you are stuck with other folks' pain that you had nothing to do with. I mean, who cut a deal? Notice Jabez said in verse 10, bless me, O Lord. <laughs> but because, uh, and, and I need your hand to be with me. Let me say it once again in verse 10. Jabez said, and this was a prayer, bless me, O Lord, but I need your hand to be with me. Let me say it once again. He prayed honestly. He said, Lord, of Israel, the, the God of promise. I, I need you to bless me, oh God. But because I need your hand to be with me, uh, I cannot be blessed before I know that your hand is with me. Because if I try to be blessed independently of your guidance, I'm going to make unwise choices and participate in arrogant behavior as if I am the sole agent of my blessings. So I need you. I need to cut a deal with you before you bless me. I need to know that your hand is, I'm getting excited, that your hand is going to be with me. Because if I try to be blessed independently of your hand, I'm going to make unwise choices and participate in arrogant behavior as if I am the sole agent of my blessings. And you know folk like that. As long as they were broke, you can speak to them. As long as they didn't have much, they were humble, they were lowly. I wish I had somebody. But God gave them a little sandwich. I wish, gave them a little sandwich. Gave them a little pick-me-up. I wish I had somebody. A little come-up. Now you can't even speak to them. Jabez had enough sense. Lord, I need you to give me increase. I need you to give me overflow. But before you bless me like that, honey, to know that your hand is going to be with me because if your hand is with me there is no wiggle room for arrogance if your hand is with me there is no wiggle room to act pious if your hand is with me I can still be a base I can still be lonely I can still be sweet I wish I had somebody look at your neighbor next door and say neighbor God is about to bless you but first you need God to lay his hands on you Jabez, watch this, did not allow, watch this, the negative influences that he was attached to, like his brothers, caused him to not be honorable. Because the Bible declare in verse 9 and 10 that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez did not allow the negative influences uh, uh, to stop him from being honorable, distinguished, noble, fair, esteem, and faithful. Just because there's garbage around you doesn't have to be garbage in you. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I may be attached to some crazy folk, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to be crazy. I'm still going to be more honorable than them. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Uh -huh. Jabez was going through. Jabez was labeled by a circumstance that he had nothing to do with. But Jabez had enough anointing, had enough God, had enough knowledge that God 
is a God of Israel, a God of promise. He says, if I can just talk to him, tell him about my situation, ask him uh, to make it better. Uh, and so he prayed uh, that the meaning of his name uh, would be reversed. Ask God to reverse it. Uh, ask God to turn it around. Uh, ask God to fix it. Uh, I feel a Pentecostal anointing uh, while the worship and praise team is ready. Uh, but lay it over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is about to reverse the curse. Uh, I wish I was back in my building. Uh, lay it over to your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, God is about to reverse the curse. How do you know that God is going to reverse the curse? Because the last sentence, the last statement, I'm still, I feel, uh, the, the last moment, the last statement that was mentioned, God says, I'm going to grant his request. Said with me, request granted <laughs> said once again request granted come on this is a fixed fight request granted what do you believe in God for say it request granted uh -huh. sometimes the stuff won't be reversed until you specifically ask God to turn it around for you. I, I asked the Lord. I got camera etiquette. I know you don't supposed to be wiping your face, but the devil is alive. I'm sweating. Uh, I asked the Lord that be broke another day in my life. How then can my people that are attached to City Cathedral have overflow when the priest doesn't? Hallelujah. I have I prophesied to you many times that there is a debt cancellation anointing that's over this ministry because it's over me. This is the best of times, the worst of times, all at the same time, but walk in your best time. Folk ask you how you doing, say thankful, looking good, smelling good, got the goods, and be honest, get you some cologne. After you bathe, Well, I can't afford that's some stuff in Harwin. This is a Harwin. You can buy some off brand stuff. You go to Walgreens. Anytime they sell it in Walgreens, it's time for you to start buying it. Be still and knowing. Lord, accept what God allows. Uh, lift thy hands unto the Lord. I'm doing another series Tara will make sure that you get it Believe and Achieve That's, 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 that's next week I, I feel something You're going through I know you are But don't allow the Don't allow your surroundings To surround you you have enough fire. They were just singing. That's a victory. I like that song too. Sister Regina, God bless you. I'm so glad that they can meet my request sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I'm listening in the audience and I'm hearing what the people need to hear long before Sunday. I can see you in the spirit as some, your tears are cuffing your cheeks, but 
God is about to reverse those tears into tears of joy. Liquid words that can be translated into a right now praise. I wish you could get this. I'm feeling something. And I know God is going to bless your life immensely. 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 Brother Lewis is going to come back to you and give you some very pertinent announcement. Listen, the dear college student, Sister Simone, God bless this baby. I, I, I want to try to get young people involved as much as I can. I keep them surrounded. I mean, they surround me. There ain't nothing old about me, not even my clothes. Go on now. Amen. Amen. I was in this marathon yesterday trying to get it done. I, I want you, I want you, I want you to. I want you to know. I want you to know that victory belongs to you. We got, listen. Um, Brother Lewis going to say once again to these mothers, and I know that we can't get you no flowers and carry it on, but um, let, let, let me just give you flowers in the spirit. You know, ain't nobody having church right now. And those that are having it need to, all right. But anyway, let me, let me give you your flowers while you can see them. We honor you today. That's your flower. We honor you, my, my youth and all of that. God bless you. Grannies and surrogate parents. We honor you. And then they even have fathers who are taking on the role of a mother. You are to be commended. We respect you. Victory belongs to you victory belongs to him come on now victory belongs to him I want you to go to the phones right now dial the number that's on the screen that's 713-659-7750 give the best love gift you can victory belongs if it belongs to God, it belongs to you because if the world is against you, he's for you and who can stand against you? This battle is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. And who will fight God? They're already a loser. You've already lost. I want you to go to the phone right now give the best Mother's Day gift. You know, you couldn't go shopping because ain't no church to go. You know what I mean? So, so give to the Lord. Give to the Lord. Give to the Lord. Come on, sow a seed. Sow a seed. Come on, we met budget last week. We need to make budget this week. I need you to help us. Help us to meet budget. Help us to meet. God has been good to you. Come on, sow in this window. We ain't the only one that's having virtual church. Just Google them. You know, there's thousands of them. All right? And um, we're going to stay online even when we get in person, in person worship. We're still going to do it. Brother Lewis is here and he's going to explain the survey. I want everybody to, to, to really participate in how that works. I need all of my leaders, particularly all of my leaders. And while he's talking to you, I want you to go to the phone. Go to the phone. Go to the phone right now. Go to the website and give online. CityCathedral.com. Come on. If you want to be a blessing to me. It's dollar sign Lee Warren Wooden. Come on, be a blessing. God bless you. I, I look, I need your money. All right? There ain't nothing wrong with money. Money ain't evil. It's a lover of it is evil. Especially if they ain't ready to deal with the blessings. That's why J Bass says, put your hands on me. So go to the phone. Those of you who, who need prayer, I want you to go to the phone. Dial the number that's on the screen real quickly. That's area code 605-313-5107. Access code 1644. One nine pound. Our prayer partners are standing by. Mother Hatter, God bless you. Mother Mary, all of you. There's so many of you. And my little sunshine, Mother Grimes. God, we'll see I get in trouble. All of my mothers, I love you, Pastor Moon. Hallelujah. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. Sister Yolanda, God bless you. Delinda, we're praying for the Nashes. We're praying for you. God bless you. All of you. Mother Lewis, tell them what's going on. So, 
We want all of our members, all of our leaders, just like Bishop has said, we want you to log on to the City Cathedral website. It's www.citycathedral.com. And when you get there on the homepage, there is a survey specifically for you. All of our members are encouraged to participate in this survey to let us know how you're doing, number one. Number two, we want to know when you would like to return as well as how you are doing. Have you been vaccinated? Have you been progressing, uh, taking all the precautions? And, and when we return, would you like us to continue those precautions? They're very important that we hear from you and make sure that you have a voice and you are counted as we make the plans to return to worship real soon. And then additionally, all of our brothers, all of our brothers, we want you to join us on Saturday, May 15th at McGregor Park. That's right, McGregor Park at 9 a.m. We want you to gather with the Kenosis Men's Ministry for a time of fellowship and fun. Now, now let me say this too. Yes, sir. See, I'm cutting it on you because That's you're right. on the hard part. <laughs> But listen, all of our brothers, all of our men, I don't know what camera Right there. Okay. All of our brothers, I want you to be present on this coming Saturday now as Brother Lewis said at 9 a.m. Please dress casually and we're going to social distance. Just about an hour of your time. All of our deacons and men of Houston and Sugarland, of Houston and Sugarland, of Houston and Sugarland. We want to meet with you. We just want to love on you. Thank God for Woodlands Men, Brother Valentine, the leader of that men's ministry. They have a great fellowship. But Houston and Sugarland, I want to see you uh, on this coming next Saturday at 9 a.m. at Herman Park at McGregor Park. Okay, McGregor, McGregor Park. Park. Right, okay, McGregor, McGregor Park. Park. Okay. Yes, McGregor, McGregor Park. Park. Right, McGregor Park. McGregor, mm -hmm. Park. McGregor Park. I want you to be present at 9 a.m. and we're gonna have some breakfast to cut little food already wrapped, good and hot and fresh. So won't you be a part? Just want to share some information with you. And just love on you too, man. Come on, invite some friends too and visitors to come. All right, don't forget now, those of you who are not saved and you want to make Jesus Christ your choice, I want you to pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, come into my life. Reign and rule. Reign and rule. Give me the victory that I need because of my relationship with you. The scripture is very clear. To as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. And so, Father, right now, thank you for engrafting us into the family of God, the kingdom of God. And so for that, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Brother Lewis? Yes, sir. One more time before you go, we want you to make sure that you uh, do your part to take your best shot. That campaign is still going on. Everyone who's 16 years and older can get a shot right now, whether it be the Moderna or the Pfizer or even the Johnson & Johnson. But make your appointment now. It's very important that as many of you who can get vaccinated, consult your physician to make sure that everything is okay medically, and then go ahead and schedule your vaccine. And then make sure you enroll to the Conania Theological College. Enrollment is open now. New semester starts real soon. So you have an opportunity to encourage and increase your, uh, your matriculation and your learning. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you right back here at City Cathedral. Have a great day and we Come love on. you. Come on, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated so that we can return back to church. I got it. My family did it. All of us, it's a very safe shot, okay? Do that victory belongs. Thank you, sir. Come on, let's sing it again. Mr. William, God bless you. Victorious people!